YouTube, Asa. So today we're going to be looking at the global and local stiffness matrices in two dimensions. So if you remember previously we were looking at um, the global and local stiffness matrices in one dimension, right? Where there's just along the uh, movement on the x axis. So I think the best way to illustrate this, I'm just going to run side by side the differences on 1D and 2D and you can kind of get an idea on how to build the stiffness matrices in the two dimensions. So We're just going to look at one member right now and it's going to be inclined theta equals go 45 degrees. Just kind of recap on the one dimension problem and how we got some value. So, uh, if you remember that we had the stiffness matrix K and we're going to call it the local stiffness matrix K. So this is what the local stiffness matrix K looked like when we have U1 in the X direction and U2 in the X direction, right? Because that was the only movement that we had in the X axis because we only had the bar in the X axis. So basically we can say that this is equivalent in the two dimensions if we kind of blow it up, right? If we can blow this up into a two-dimensional matrix, but we're still only contributing in the x-axis, it'll just look like this. So we have u1, x, u1, y, u2, x, u2, y. So this is saying that we have our u1 in the x-direction and our u2 in the x-direction and also u2, y, and u1, y. But because these, in this example, both equal zero because we're one dimension, this is going to be a zero column, right? And then we're looking at u1x of one, u2x of one, minus one, sorry. And we got u1x, u1y, u2x, u2y, right? So we've kind of blown this matrix up into a two-dimensional form but it, it means the same thing essentially because we've just got our zero rows and zero columns where our y component is right so that's just equals zero so this basically is the same thing right so now okay if we bring it over to the actual two-dimensional form when we have an incline we can set this up differently. So now our local stiffness matrix is going to look like this, right? We're going to have a 4 by 4 because remember in the one dimensional we have uh, one degree of freedom per node because we only have movement in the x direction. So now if we've got movement in the, both the x and the y direction, then we have two degrees of freedom per node. So we're going to end up with a 4 by 4 matrix, right? And then similarly with the one dimensional we had a 2 by 2 matrix if we had two nodes. But now because we have two nodes, we have two degrees of freedom per node. So we're going to get a 4 by 4 matrix. So what is this going to look like? We're going to have the 1x, u1, y, u, 2x and u2y. Now what goes in here? So remember when we did um, in one dimension we had multiple nodes? Let's go three nodes and this can be our they're gonna be equal. A over L are equal so this is our member one and our member two. The K1 stiffness matrix that was essentially just a local stiffness matrix and K1 equals K2 in this case because we've said that AE over L they're both equal. So in this case the local stiffness matrix for the first and the second element are both the same and then if you recall that our global stiffness matrix was the sum of the two stiffness matrices, right? And that was because we had uh, three nodes now in one dimension, we were looking for a three by three. So we had our first, our second, and our third. And the U1x, 
u2x and u3x, okay? So, so we have our 1, minus 1, 0, 1, and then remember we have 1 plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and 1. So it's a symmetric matrix. So this was our, our, our global stiffness matrix for our one-dimensional two-member system. And we literally do the exact same thing, or yeah, one-dimensional system. So we literally do the, the exact same thing on a two-dimensional system, except now that we have an angle of 45 degrees, um, there's been, I don't know, there, there's some smart people that came up with the transformation matrix and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go through any of that because, you, I don't know, you can read the textbook yourself if you really want to get a better understanding. But basically, it's just a bunch of matrix manipulation um, to get some tra uh, transformation matrix. And eventually, you just come up with, say this is going to be your local stiffness matrix of same thing, A, E over L. But we're looking at 4 by 4. And all it is is, so this is basically what we get for a local stiffness matrix. And this is going to be the same for every member in, in a system. It doesn't matter how many nodes there are. The local is always going to look like this, where C equals cos theta, S equals sine theta. And then when we have more members in our system, you just add the local stiffness matrices up to get your global stiffness matrix. And I'm going to do an example uh, in my next video that outlines how you do that. But for this video, we're just looking at where the stiffness matrix comes from for a two-dimensional shape when, yeah, where the local um, stiffness matrix comes from on a two-dimensional shape. So for our example here, we had our theta equal 45. So cos of 45 is root 2 over 2, and sine of 45 is also root 2 over 2. Right, so all of our matrix, or all of our, um, our angles where we had our, our cos squared, our cos times sine, negative cos squared, negative cos times sine, and, and whatever, and you fill in your stiffness matrix with your angle of 45, right? Okay, so this is what our local stiffness matrix look, looks like for our two-dimensional uh, system that we have up top. So um, most of the time you're not going to get all the same coefficients, but just because we have the angle of 45, cos of 45 equals sine of 45. So that's why we have all the same values in here. But normally you're going to have a different uh, theta and then your values are going to be all different. So um, yes, yeah, so that's basically the only difference. It's super easy. Um, you just look at the this big matrix formula and you take the cos and the sine of your angles and you plug them in this formula and then to get your global stiffness matrix. Um, in this case, because we only have one member, the global stiffness matrix equals the local stiffness matrix. But in my next example, my next tutorial, I'm gonna have an example um, where we have three members and then we'll show you how to add up your local stiffness matrix to come up with your global stiffness matrix. So this is literally the only difference um, and I hope that you can kind of see that the blown up kind of version of the one dimensional problem is, you know, essentially the same thing as your 2D problem, but now we just have angles involved. So there's one extra step where we have this transformation of your local to your global. So, um, yeah, so my next video, watch it. I'm going to run through an example probably make more sense after you follow that example uh, step by step and uh, see how this is applied and how you can come up with your global stiffness matrix. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe, like, and share with your friends. And check out my website at www.everythingeng.com. Um, I'll send a link down here at the bottom. Thanks for watching.